Dark Souls is hard. Genuinely hard. There's no denying this, and my videos over the years, while made to be entertaining, have not helped either. So, this video is going to be an actual guide to this game. I'm gonna cover from start to killing the first boss and everything in between like magic, lore, shortcuts, how shit this game is. The only difference between classes are starting gear and stats. Any class is viable, but we'll be picking the one that's considered to be the best class in the game. I do not recommend picking the master key if you are new to this game. It will break progression and end up leaving you in a higher level area. We'll instead pick the next best option. Kept you waiting, huh? After lighting the bonfire, you'll be greeted with your first boss. We do not have the right equipment just yet, so run past him and grab your shield, weapon, and miracle caps and talisman. The messages on the ground will contain helpful tips on controls, and you can test them out on passive enemies nearby. One of these tips will tell you how to perform a plunging attack. After entering the fall gate, press R2 to step over the ledge, and press R1 while falling to perform a plunging attack. After the plunging attack, roll down to escape the asylum. This is why the plunging attack is the most reliable move in the game. Fashion is the end game goal of this game, so staying in human form no matter what is vital. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church, the other is far below. You can go either way, but going down is easy. Firelink is a safe haven with lots of good items to pick up. You won't have to worry about getting attacked. Or Well, at least we have a good early weapon. Where is the miracle builder, old man? Miracles are widely considered to be the most powerful spell class in the game, and you can even get offensive miracles for free very early. One of the reasons why we're going down is that we can use the verticality of the area to move quickly. You have got. To be. After checking for any stray skeletons, carefully roll down and run past the Tech Knight. After picking up the Eye of the Dead, pop into this coffin to be transported into the Rave Zone. Sorceries are widely considered to be the most powerful spell class in the game. The earliest place you can buy is in New Londo. However, he has very few selections that are overpriced. For more options and better pricing, we'll need some range damage. Go up to the Undead Bird, find the Hollow Merchant, and buy all the arrows you can. Thank you kindly. <laughs> Wait, I forgot to buy the book. God damn it. Talk to the hollow merchant to get the residence key. On your way back to Firelink, jump over the stairs to access the lower undead bird. Use the residence key to free Briggs. Somebody, please let me out of here. I am much obliged for your assistance. Talk to him to access oh, the merchandise. Terrific to see us both in one piece. And pray that we never go hollow. Oh, hello. 
terrific to see us both in one piece and pray that you never go hollow. Actually, pyromancy is considered to be the most powerful. Dark Souls 2 player managed to exit the game without speaking. A Dark Souls 2 player ha could beat the game in its entirety without speaking to anyone. Avoiding purchases, repairs, upgrades and more. The speedrunner... Oh... The less weight you have on, the more invincibility frames you get, and vice versa. However, medium rolls have a unique ability of rolling in the air. To learn pyromancy, we first need some fire damage. Fortunately, there are some fire bombs you can pick up in Firelink Shrine. Just after the start of Undead Burg, jump over and use the ladder to clip into the wall. Do a series of rolls to climb over and jump to fall down. Have around 25 to 29% equip load. This will let you roll in midair, which will cancel any fall damage, just like in real life. Once you see the area name, jump down. Follow the path down and throw a fireball. You know you succeeded when you see the damage indicator. Warp back to Firelink. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. Now we just need to buy spells to... Oh. Souls are used to buy, level up, and upgrade. You can get them by either killing enemies or popping item labeled souls. In the remastered version, you can now use soul items in bulk. Swap the number of arrows with the number of souls. Now that we have infinite amounts of souls, we can upgrade our Pyro Flame, level up to 15 int, and buy every single spell in the game. Make sure to empty Griggs' inventory before talking to him for more items. To fully upgrade the Pyromancy Flame, we need to head to Blight Town. Take the elevator down to New Londo and unlock the path to Valley. I do not recommend picking the Master Key if you are new to this game. Relegates the game down to one pure, empty precision. Dark Souls is well known for its interconnected level design. We explored on this briefly with paths leading from Undead Burg, but now, with the fall control spell that removes all fall damage, we can use the verticality of the map to move around even more freely. Slide down the wall and cast fall control for the second jump. Quitting out before dying while in fall control will let you survive any fall damage. Up the hill and ready for the final jump. You'll need to slide down and jump to the right at the very last second. Be ready to quit out since the fall is of lethal height. Since we start from the top of Light Town, we can use fall control to move around quickly. More importantly, we can go to Quailana and fully upgrade our power flame. To pursue my pyromancy, you must give something up. Thank her for her services and get the fire tent. What is it? Fool! She's resistant to fire, so let the poison swamp do all the hard work.
You can further increase the damage by picking up power within, red tier stone ring, and after killing the Hydra, freeing Dusk and Hop for the Dusk Crank. We are now fully stacked and it's almost time to kill our first boss. Once you enter the boss room, quit out. Go down and invite 12 of the hollows upstairs. Probably a good idea to use the slumbering dragon crest ring. You only need one, so give the others a warm welcome. Stand right next to the fog gate and parry. Fist to clip through the fog. This will activate the gargoyles without crossing the fog gate. After that, walk back to the bonfire to reset and you'll be able to talk to the gargoyles. No one has come this far? Not for a very long while. Young Harlow, do you wish to shed this curse? Then accept the fate of your elk, and face the trials that await you. Now that we have the key, do some... Now that we have the key, do the same to one of the hollows outside. This time, clipping into a kill plane to activate the kill camp. Head back to the bonfire and to Sin's Fortress. There was one path into Anor Londo, and that was through Sen's Fortress. Within Sen's Fortress, we see the hollowed forms of both Knights of Berenike and Boulder. Two nations that attempted to reach the land of the gods, desperate to discover the fate of the undead. They all failed. Every knight of Berenike, every Boulder knight, the Knight King Rendal and Logan himself. Every one of them failed. Except Tarkas. Instead of fighting the Iron Golem at all, it is said that Tarkas used the Iron Golem to fling himself over the wall. Unfortunately, this method is also the reason why we find this corpse in Anolando. To replicate this method, jump over the gap and buy Tarkas's great sword. Larger, thicker, heavier, and cruder than any normal blade. You'll need 19 strength and 10 dexterity to two-hand it, but don't tell anyone you leveled up. The key is facing your back to Anolando and baiting the giant for a grab attack. You want to position yourself behind the right leg at the same time the grab happens. This will launch you over to Anorlando. However, like Tarkus, we don't really have control over where we end up. The jump simply has way too many variables to be consistent, so the only thing you can do is try. After entering An Orlando, do a frame-perfect load warp by force quitting just before the load ends. After you parry the Silver Knight through the fall, go back to the bottom. Jump over the railing just like before to skip all the Silver Knights. And enter the fog gate to get the key item. Have grown hollow. Have you what it takes?
There are two ways to access the Duke's archives. You can do a extended fall controlled meme roll past the elevator. Make sure to wear the lingering dragon crest ring. After landing safely, head up to the elevator. The camera is going to be locked in death cam just like Senskip, and you'll have limited time to pull this off. You'll need to enter the gold fog gate and quit out within 67 seconds after casting fall control. After the fall control times out, all the accumulated damage will catch up to you, just like in real life. The first method uses the death cam mechanic to unload this fog. The second method relies on parkouring up the nearby slope. Navigating the path requires pixel perfect tight loops. Flipping into the void can be solved with quitting out, but slipping will reset all the progress made. The best way I've found is to take 3 to 4 steps and backing up your save, so that even if you slip, you can restore your progress, which as you can imagine, takes a very long time. Once you make it to the entrance, clip inbound by rolling into the corner. Do not light the bonfire as it'll softlock you. Progress carefully and go up to our first boss, Seat the Scaler. Homeward Bone or Dark Sign out. And up to the Anor Londo entrance. Take the gargoyles down to Sense and go down to Undead Paris from there. Fall control assisted me roll to escape the boss battle. After quitting out, clip through the geometry and cast fall control once again before the giant. Land on the railing and go forward to reach the entrance. And do another me roll down to escape sense force. Need two spells, Fire Tempest and Power Within. Use the Dust Crown Ring to go half health. Swap it out with the Red Tear Stone Ring. And use Power Within to boost damage and reach 20% health to also boost damage. So that's the first boss of Dark Souls. If you have any questions, feel free to ask at this address and I'll-
After editing the video, I found out that you can actually escape the DLC without the Lord Vessel by killing a bunch of NPCs, but... Yeah. I really fucked this one up.